let's go to overhand calculations. So it's kind of nice to see it graphically, but it's also nice to have the actual calculation up here. And this calculation is good for 48 degrees north latitude. If you're somewhere else, then give me a call and I'll, I'll look up. Because these numbers here, the 1.7 and the 2.2, are based on this latitude. Those are, those are constants. And what it gives you is a range. So P is the projection of the overhang out from the side of the building. So that's P. H is the dimension from the bottom of the overhang to the bottom of the window. So it's not necessarily the height of the window. As your roof pitch changes and as the depth of your overhang changes, then that H number changes. So you have to kind of play with it. You plug in some numbers and see what you come up with and then work it and, and then decide how much protection you want because if you're a hot weather weenie like me, I would probably use that 1.7 number. If you use 1.7 on the bottom, that will give you full shade from May 15th until August 1st, which to me sounds like a good thing. If you're, if you've got some really tall windows and that 1.7 number is just going to make that overhang too ridiculous, then the 2.2 will give you full shade on the summer solstice only. So that's kind of like a minimum number. You don't want to get your overhang shorter than that. Or you're going to have sun coming in in the summer and you're going to have to put up shades or else you're just going to cook. So you can see for different numbers, um, we came out with different overhangs. I can tell you with an 8-foot plate, so the top of the wall is at 8 feet, roof pitch of a 412, which is 18 and a half degrees, if you do an overhang for a sliding glass door, um, that overhang is going to be 3 and a half feet. And a 42-inch overhang is kind of tough to make it look good. So then you can do things like night insulation. I'm thinking of a house, and I'll show it in the, in the slideshow. We did a house where they had water barrels sitting underneath the window seat, and they would absorb radiant energy all day long, and then at night they would radiate to the living space. And it was a really nice system. But they didn't want a three-and-a-half-foot overhang over these windows, so we did uh, reflectors. And the reflector bounces another 30 to 40% worth of solar gain up onto those drums in the wintertime. And at night, they would fold up. And they had um, 5 eighths inches of extruded polystyrene, foil-faced, rigid foam insulation. It has an R value of 7.3 for 5 eighths of an inch. I'll give you an idea. Cellulose and fiberglass, R3 per inch, R3 or 4. This was 7.3 for 5 eighths of an inch. It's the best insulation you can buy that isn't horrendously expensive. And it comes with a foil facing, so we glued it to some exterior-grade plywood and attached it to the bottom of the window frame with a piano hinge, galvanized. So at night, they just folded it up, and it stopped those drums from radiating all their heat out to everything outside. And during the day, we dropped it five degrees down from horizontal, and it bounced another 35% worth of sun up onto the drums. It worked really well. And in the summertime, they closed it up, and we didn't have to worry about shading the bottom half of that window. So the overhang, I think, they came up with was two feet, and they figured they would just close up the, the night insulation when they didn't want sun on the drums. So it's not that big a deal to have a little user participation. Does that overhang stuff make sense? You can also do it graphically. I think I gave you the sun angles. Didn't I? Yeah, there's the sun angles up there. So you can just take an east or west elevation of the house and take a protractor and draw the, the lines there where the sun angle is coming in. And then you can see exactly how far back into the house the sun is going to penetrate, too. Because when you're placing thermal storage mass, it really needs to be lit. I like to say mass that's not lit is unfit. It takes about three times as much mass and a lot more surface area to absorb that radiant energy by heating the air first and then having the air heat the mass. It's not an efficient way to do it. You want the sunlight actually hitting the mass. That way it's radiant energy charging it up rather than convective energy. Do this. Collection angles. So optimum angle for winter is latitude minus 15 equals, no, sorry, yeah, that was good, 63 degrees. And summer is latitude minus 15 equals 34 degrees. That's, that's just a constant. And so this, this 34 degrees is an 812 pitch. 
So whenever you're drawing house plans, the slope of the roof is measured in something over 12. So it's always 12 inches horizontal, and then in that 12 inches of horizontal run for the roof, how many inches is it rising up? Typical house is a 412 pitch, which is about like this. Um, 812 is pretty steep. 1212 is 45 degrees. That's really steep. You don't want to walk on that. Anything over a 512, I don't walk on without a rope. And 812, but that's 812 is a great pitch for a house. It, it looks pretty nice. Gives you some big attic space. Yeah, and the snow slides off it, which is a good thing. East of the mountains, having that steeper pitch. And people have also asked, well, don't you have to get up there and clean off your PV panels when it snows? If it's a decent pitch, you know, probably even a 412, depending on the consistency of the snow, it will slide right off because snow is actually not white. It's sort of opaque. It's sort of like polar bear fur. The sun will pass through snow. And then if there's something dark underneath that snow, it will melt the snow right on top of the dark surface and the snow will slide off. 